All right, guys, welcome back. Well, in the last clip, to recap real quick, we showed you how to basically take, initialize your machines, get yourself back uh, to the starting point on your, uh, on your table, zero out your X and Y, take your Y axis, run it up your gantry, slow it down towards the end, we don't want to have a collision here, <laughs> get the overall maximum travel distance, divide by two, make a mark on your table. In our case, I had a 50 and 1 quarter inch uh, maximum travel length on my Y axis. So, 25 inches is my halfway point. The reason I do that is because I'm programming my seams that go into these slabs at 48 inches. Well, it leaves me an extra inch on each end of the Y axis just as a little precautionary safety measure so I don't get an over-travel alarm, okay? Good enough. Well, <clears throat> we've blocked it in place. I told you, uh, not only between the blog and everything, there's a safety issue here. You're, you're dealing with a 50, 60, sometimes an upwards of 100 pounds piece of material, okay? You don't want this coming loose. You really don't, okay? I'm running a three and a half horsepower router on my machine. Some of you guys have three and four kilowatt spindles. You've got a lot of power at your uh, at your disposal. I'm a little envious, uh, only because I couldn't afford one at startup. Uh, nor did the shop even have the power up here to run something like that. Okay. Well, before we do block and clamp all this in place, all right, what we do <laughs> is we've got to find we've got to find centers. Okay. Now, with the material in a slab, it's as simple as measure the overall length of your material. Now, in my case, I'm building a, a headboard, excuse me, for a log bed, for a queen. It needs to be 60 inches is its maximum width sitting inside of each of the posts. Well, I've got an 84 inch slab. Cut down, you know, maybe you had a you, you had a 120 inch slab, cut off what you don't need, cut off the sections you don't need, keep the best piece, measure overall, find your halfway, make a mark and line it up with the halfway point on your table. That's your first step. Alright? The next thing we want is we're going to basically try to get this as level in the machine as we can. <laughs> the way I do that is once I measure and I find the halfway point on the material, which this is 84 inches, so my halfway is 42, I measure my maximum width, which in this case is 15 and a half. My exact halfway point in this, all right, is seven and three quarters. I make a mark, okay? I'll take my straight edge, I've got a big Swanson, big 72 inch straight edge here. I'll set it down. Now, I told you, this machine is equipped with a laser crosshair. When the gantry is pulled in, and I line up that crosshair directly on my center mark, in the center of my material, in the center of my machine, I can then use the laser crosshair to make the marks down each end, okay? Without moving the gantry, it's a pain in the butt. I'll run it off my center. Now I'm not moving the gantry on the x-axis. I'm just moving it on the y back and forth. <laughs> I'll run the gantry down with the laser rod off the center. I'll make a mark. I'll do the same thing up the other end. Now what I do is I take my straight edge, okay? Draw a line and I'll connect it. Now, this is non-symmetrical material. It's crazy, it's wavy, it's 24 inches at one point, it's 15 and a half here, it's got highs, it's got lows. Okay, well, we've got to try to find the best of all the evils here. Now, if after you do your centers, stand back. You're going to do a lot of eyeballing on this stuff. Um, I'm not going to try to get out of the screen, but I would uh, 
I would come in and at the other end of the shop I've got I've got a good 12 feet to the door. I'll stand back and I'll eyeball that line. Ah, okay. Well the line's kind of it's crocked or crooked or whatever. I've got to tweak my slab over just a little. <clears throat> I'll do that. I'll redraw another line. I'll look at it. When I'm happy with my line eyeballing it and knowing that it's about as straight as I think I can visually get it, I leave the slab and I take whatever I've got kicking around for scrap, okay? This scrap material everybody's got in their shop, okay? I make sure that my block and the screw that I'm going to use is only going to go through this block and into my spoiler board that I put on over the factory. I don't want to be putting holes in a nice factory board. Someday we may get to trade this in for a, for a big one, for a big machine. Nobody's going to want to buy one that's plugged full of holes, okay? So, we start blocking. Now I block this thing all over. Ultimately, what I'm doing, <coughs> what I'm doing is I'm preventing this thing from shifting back and forth on the axe. <coughs> Excuse me. Now people go, well, see, great, you've got it blocked on the X. How about on the Y? Well, because I found my center, and I know that I'm only going 24 inches off each side of my center to make a four-foot wide box, which we'll get to that in a minute, uh, everything on the, the end here is excess. I end up dropping a couple of uh, screws in, and I screw the end down. The blocks hold it from shifting on the X. The screws hold it from sliding on the Y. Well, we've now taken care of basically almost like two axes on the machine. Well, the other thing we got to keep into consideration, most of this material is going to have a discrepancy. Just like we wrote in the article in our blog, this, is, this has got a cup in the bottom, okay? Cup is, uh, cup is just what it sounds like. Well. This has the ability to rock a little, okay? Well, as we're blocking this, as we're getting it fastened down, the one thing we do try to do is I try to keep things in perspective. Now, this is a, this is a nice long six-foot level. It's going to basically go off my high points. Now, I just, I, I use this as reference more than anything uh, there's a lot of factors here that could that can throw the level out because it isn't plain. Uh, but I do know that my, my machine is, is perfectly level to the floor. Uh, so I use my level to basically take any of the curse off this, okay? We check the level on the Y. Like I said, I've already secured this. It's not too bad. Well, let me get this out of the way. Excuse me for one minute. I don't mean to step in and out. Okay, the other thing I do is I take a smaller level and I'll check my axis on the X. Well, this is spot on. Okay, well, it's not always spot on. And what happens if it's not, you may have a little roll in this, okay? Get yourself some cedar shakes. Uh, maybe you've got some scrap pieces off of ripped three-quarter or... <laughs> uh, five-quarter material, whatever, in different thicknesses you ripped on your table saw. Anything you can use as a shim, shim this. Keep your level on it and shim it. You want to take that rock out. You don't want this thing floating in your machine, ever. Well, you're going, Steve, that's all fine and dandy. I don't have a laser crosshair to run my straight edge. Okay? Which maybe I should have got to that before the blocks. I'm sorry. Okay, well, here's a little, here's a little heads up for you. This is not to be replaced by any means with the permanently mounted and calibrated laser that's on, on these machines. <clears throat> but for the sake of drawing lines or, or going to the next stage of this video in a second where we actually use the laser to place the box on the machine, or on the, uh, the material on the machine, you can go down and this is a laser from the dollar store. Okay, it's really bright. This is a three-quarter square block. Three-quarter block, one-inch block, whatever you want to use. Throw your verniers or put it in a drill index. Find the hole for your laser. Turn it on. 
put it through the hole in your block. Okay? There's a mounting face that my router is on. Now, like I said, do not use this thinking that it's going to replace a permanently mounted and calibrated laser. That's not the case. What you can do, though, insert it in your block, put a little piece of two-way tape on it, stick it on the front of your router mount, okay? Essentially, it'll be on, it'll be stuck with a piece of two-way tape, and now you've got a piece of, uh, you got a laser on your material, which will help you to make your marks off your center to draw your straight line. You get the idea. Again, this is not a substitute, nor should you try to calibrate this. My laser is permanently mounted and it's all calibrated from the factory. This is kind of a cheat. Uh, I think I got this at the dollar store. You can get it to uh, aggravate the cat with or something, okay? But this is an option to give you guys, you know, a laser to use as reference for, for making marks on your material, okay? Good enough. Now, <laughs> the next thing we're going to do is we're going to show you guys, we, we keep talking about making a box with the laser cross here. Well, what's nice about the laser is it shoots two beams. It shoots a beam across the X, beam across the Y. It looks just like crosshairs in a, in a gun scope or a rifle scope or whatever. Okay, we're going to pause this video for a minute. I'm going to bring a, I'm going to bring the video in closer so you guys can see the laser. We're going to show you how we make the marks, and then from there, our next step, we're going to put a spoiler board bit in, and we're going to mill this thing down. One other word to the wise on, on the milling here: whether you use your level or you use your straight edge. Okay, I like using uh, I like using my straight edge. <laughs> I'm going to run this all the way across my material. I got my center here. I measure 24 inches here, 24 inches down there. We use the laser to make our marks. And so we'll get to that in a second. But what we're looking for here, before you drop that bit, even though I told you I do all my starting points. Even in my programs, I set my datums to always fire from the center of my material. Do not, excuse me, do not touch top just because you're going off the center of your material. This piece has got indiscrepancies. Down there, I'm probably 375 thousandths lower in a pocket here. Where my center is, I'm a good 125 to 150 thousandths, and this is my high spot. I am going to touch the top with my bit on my highest point on this slab, because if you don't, <laughs> you're going to take your spoiler bit, and in the case of my router, if I touch on a low point that's 200, 300 thousandths lower than the rest of the material, well, even though I'm taking off how many ever thousands, by the time I run that in to 300 plus thousands in, in the higher end of the material, you're going you're gonna to bog the motor down, always start from your highest point. I know it's going gonna, it's gonna to run over a couple areas where it's not going to touch for a couple passes. Start at your highest point. You lessen the risk of doing damage to anything yourself, the machine, the material, okay? Start from your highest point. All right, you guys can hang on one second. We're going to set the camera up close to the table. We'll get that laser in. And by God, we're going to show you how we, uh, how we get it done. All right, we'll be right back, guys. Thank you.